How much power is too much power? If you asked any gamer that, well, we'd all say you can never get enough. If you said you had enough power in your system, that would be like saying you'd be fine by getting 11th place in a game of player unknowns battlegrounds. As gamers, we're always wanting more. You want that chicken dinner. And that's what the laptop we're looking at now is offering to you. More power, more frames, more gaming. This is the MSI GT73VR7RE Titan SLI review. Wow, that was hard to say in one breath. Model numbers are a pain, but it is necessary. We're looking at a 17-inch gaming laptop here in the high-end Titan series. 7th generation Intel quad-core i7-7820HK processor and dual GTX 1070 graphics cards in SLI. But that's not all you get. 500GB NVMe SSD in RAID 0, 32 gigs of RAM, and even a 120Hz G-Sync 1080p panel. This machine has more specs than most desktops, and then some. Everything has been turned to 11, with twice the RAM you generally need, twice the SSD in 4x SATA speeds, twice the graphics cards, and a tearing free G-Sync monitor with twice the normal refresh rates. This machine is for those people who go beyond just one graphics card, for the master race who just can't have 60 Hertz refresh rate. This is for serious gamers who needs the machine that they bring around to be on par or if not better than their competition, even if they're running on tricked out desktops. The twin 1070s here will basically smoke all games in 1080p and benchmarks at that resolution will almost be more for just educational purposes rather than actual tests to see what settings you need for your games. We're looking at a 21,000 point fire strike score here enough for 4k gaming if you want and the cooling system is ridiculous i count 12 heat pipes in total being cooled by huge coolers through massive vents with four exhausts this guy can scream with its 5000 rpm fans if you want to push it hard and admittedly temps can get high if you set it to overclock turbo profiles but that's what you get for so much power under that hood Power can come at a price though, particularly when it comes to bulk, battery life, and, well, charging. This guy tips the scales at over 9 pounds, 2 inches thick, and battery life ekes out at barely 100 minutes for general tasks and maybe an hour of gaming. What else? Well, the 230 watt power brick is massive. Oh wait, there's two of them, joined together by this weird alien face hugger type thing. That's the price you pay for all that power, that's for sure. I mean, aside from the price you pay for buying the unit itself. So it's got power, and it benchmarks really high too. But hey, how nice is it to game on? Well, you're getting what is pretty standard for high-end MSI laptops these days. A great SteelSeries RGB zone-lit chiclet keyboard with a deck that is fairly solid. An above-average mouse pad with a bonus RGB edge light and surface temps are pretty comfortable. Build quality is excellent, with mostly plastic construction, but relatively good materials. And we're particularly impressed with the outside design of the device with sleek racing curves and an aggressive sports car grille on the back, which makes the business side of the notebook seem pale in comparison with dull monitor and keyboard bezels. But we digress. You get a high-end selection of ports, five USB 3.0, analog 3.5mm connections, card reader, and Kensington locks on the sides, while the back has a Thunderbolt 3, HDMI, DisplayPort, Ethernet, and power. That's pretty much it for that, except for a few status LEDs in front to complete a nice, clean, and flexible gaming rig. At the bottom, you'll see the big bad grille that allows for such massive airflow, and if you're feeling adventurous, opening it up shows us the relatively good speakers by Dana Audio, extra RAM slots, and I think SSD and HDD slots below a cooling heatsink. Clean the fans up if you want later on, but opening this guy will void your warranty. So, this gaming laptop looks great, especially on the outside. Has specs that will keep you drooling for at least a few years too. And so far, all of the benchmarks and games we've played have shown it to be a very reliable machine, 
with clock speeds maintaining at max with no discernible throttling. Is there anything else you need to know about it? Yes, of course, you kind of do. There's a 1080p webcam here that's relatively serviceable, especially since video conferencing is not the machine's strong suit. Battery life, as we mentioned, is in the 100 minutes or half of that for gaming. Uh, side effect of the G-Sync panel, which doesn't allow the GPU to be disabled for more power savings. And one thing that MSI can't change is SLI support for games. Some games just don't scale on SLI, so you have to figure out which games you want to play and decide if this variant is for you instead of a single GPU machine. There's also software things to consider. MSI still installs Norton Antivirus on these machines, which thankfully is one of only a few annoying added software out of all of the pre-installed ones. The rest are generally tools for the system like the SteelSeries engine and the Nahimic audio tuner. But honestly, I'd probably just turn them off and use the Dragon Engine and MSI Afterburner because more apps in the background means less resources can be used for the actual tasks at the hand. I keep Dragon Engine on for some monitoring, plus the CPU can be overclocked via its turbo profile and we did get increased performance when we did. Overall though, you can stick with its default turbo since it's already overclocked out of the box. The benchmarks you see here in this review were on the turbo profile with a little bit of an overclock. So how much does one have to pay for such a massively powerful rig? Well, the thing is, this configuration is slightly out of the normal. I'm pretty sure in the Philippines, the Titan Pro variant is just over 200,000 pesos. I'd say this machine's config will just be over that, 220,000 perhaps. Internationally, we're looking at around 3,400 US dollars. That's a lot of money, but if you consider the specs here, it's not really all that expensive compared to a desktop. I did the PC part picker slash DynaQuest math here, and I came up with around 160,000 pesos minimum, but more like 180,000 pesos plus uh, cost for a similar desktop with not exactly the right equivalent 120 hertz G-Sync panel. And boy, is that G-Sync 120Hz panel a dream. I mean, I've been sort of spoiled by a large 4K HDR 60Hz TV here at home, a relatively inexpensive non-gaming one, mind you. But seeing 120Hz on this 17-inch display blows my mind. There's no doubt that for competitive gaming, I would much rather have the doubled refresh rate. It's so buttery smooth, you almost can't go back to 60Hz which is exactly what everyone says when they experience this kind of monitor. And yes, it's a bit small for me when playing at home, but taking this guy on the go for 17-inch 120Hz gaming goodness with all that power under the hood makes me sort of want to sell my desktop and go full mobile. But that's a question you need to ask yourself. Aside from the monetary investment, this guy is not exactly portable. 9 plus pounds, not counting the massive double power bricks. However, what you're getting in exchange here is like PC Master Race Gaming distilled to a little black box. You're not going to need 120Hz for editing videos or doing your PowerPoint presentations. However, even on the desktop side, it is a pain to get 120Hz G-Sync panel on the cheap. This makes this 200, 220,000 peso machine on a level that's hard to get to even via desktop means. And being a portable device just sends it over the top. If you see yourself lacking space in your room or don't want the ugly cables and big boxes of a desktop, or you see yourself moving your home base every so often, but need to get the pure master race type of experience, then this is definitely for you. This is not something you put on your lap or a coffee table, but gosh darn it, I don't care. Plug those double power bricks in and enjoy. We give the MSI GT73 VR7RE Titan SLI a highly recommended award for being such a killer machine for people who can carry it. I'm Alex from TechnoClass.com. Thanks for watching this review. Leave a like, subscribe, or do whatever. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.